This is Ray Duan with PocketNow.com with a quick look at Zumobi. Today I'm going to give a quick run through on how the application works. First, just want to let you know that I am running the application on my AT&T Tilt and using a Wi-Fi connection. So if I tap on the Z here, starts the application up. The first thing you'll see is this message to zoom out use Z. Kind of a reminder of how the application kind of works. Once it goes through that, you get this end user's license agreement. You only get this the first time you start up the application, so I just accept it. And you're brought into the sign-in screen. A few things I don't like about the sign-in screen is, one, your on-screen keyboard obscures the view of your password field. So in order to see it, you minimize your screen, and there you can see it. But it run, you run into another problem. Your option for your soft input panel, your on-screen keyboard, disappear. There's no way to tap on the screen to get back to it unless you either, one, tap on the uh, on the, one of the fields, but that causes pro this proves problematic because you can't see what you're typing. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take off my tilt off of the cradle I'm using. And you can see we can sign in here, but there's another problem I don't like about this is when you type in your password, it actually shows all the letters that you've typed in. And then zoom in here, see if you can see that. So it doesn't obscure it with the normal asterisks like most other applications do. That's problematic for me just because of security concerns. Someone could look over your shoulder and see a password you're typing. Not that most people would, but again, it's just a security concern I have. So I will be right back in a second. I'm going to sign into Zomobi and continue with the demonstration. So now I've logged into Zumobi, and what I didn't show you was how long it took to actually log in for the first time, which is about 30 to 40 seconds. Part of that was because it was a first time login, it was downloading the content into each of the tiles. Subsequent logins won't take as long. So now we see the 16 tiles here across the screen, and in between every four tiles or quadrant, there's a center tile, which actually zooms in to show you a larger view of each of the individual tiles. If you are using a non-touchscreen device, you can use the 1, the 3, the 7, or the 9 key in your keypad to zoom in. Or you can also use your D-pad. Same with the touchscreen devices. And on the touchscreen devices, you can just use your finger to, to zoom in. One of the things I didn't like about this was each of these individual tiles looks like you know they're finger friendly size, but tapping on it doesn't bring you into that individual tile, it just brings you into the zoomed view. So for touchscreen device users, that just means an extra step for you to get to your content. Uh, in my my opinion, kind of a poor choice in usability here. So here we've got into one of the quadrants and you can see four larger views of the tiles. And in the center is another tile which is used for navigation. If you are uh, using your keypad, you can use the 1, the 3, the 7, or the 9 to access the individual tiles, or you can use the 2, 4, 6, or 8 to move into one of the other quadrants. The Z button there will actually just zoom you out to the main screen. Across the button, we have a inbox key, a menu key, and a help screen key. The inbox and the menu kind of bring you to the same area. So if I tap on the inbox, it just brings you to this. And here you see your inbox, and in this inbox, these are tiles that you've sent to yourself either from Zumobi's website, or tiles you've sent from Zumobi itself, or tiles that your friends may have sent you. Scrolling to the right, we have a deleted box, which is tiles that have been deleted after replacing them with new tiles on the main screen. You have also feature tiles by the Zumobi staff. You have an options key here to update your data manually or to exit the application. And then here you can access the help screen, which just helps you navigate the, the application. To get out, you just tap this X key here, and we're back to this view. So if I tap on one of the individual tiles, for example, here the Associated Press is in their national news. We'll get some contents like the new news for the day. 
and if I use my D-pad or the scroll wheel I can pick one of the articles so I'm going to pick this article here and it just gives you a quick peek at what the news article is about again you can use your scroll wheel or your D-pad to read the article to get to other articles you can either use the left right arrows at the top or you can use your D-pad and then across the bottom you'll notice a banner ad, a sponsor key, an unlabeled 8 key, and a rate tile key. Tapping on the, the, ban the banner ad, the 8 or the 7 actually all do the same thing. It just sends that tile's information or that, ba that sponsor's information to your inbox so you can add that tile to your, your screen if you want to. Why they needed three of these, I don't know. Uh, I think they could have used it for something different. Uh, something else to take notice of is the rate tile key. This just lets you rate the tile if you, you know how much you like it. And then the other thing I noticed was the Windows soft keys don't do anything here. So it's again just a poor usability design here. The OK button doesn't do anything. It just actually brings up the start menu which kind of surprises me. And actually clicking the start menu button doesn't minimize it. You actually have to tap it on the screen. If you use the Z key, it just zooms you back out. Now if you want to replace content, you actually just go back to your menu here. And I'm going to go back to the inbox. And as you can see, this application actually takes a while to just navigate through the screens, which again makes it, makes it a little difficult to use on a daily basis. But let's go to my inbox, and there's some um, tiles here. And let's just say if I'm interested in, looks like this one's called AP Strange. So if I tap on it, gives you a quick, uh, quick, quick synopsis of what it is. It just says AP Strange News. And if I want to add it, I just click Add. And then I have to choose a tile to replace that I don't want to use. You can use your keypad or you can just tap on one of the icons here. I'll just tap it right here. Actually tapping on it doesn't work. You actually have to just use the center button on your D-pad. Again, another poor usability uh, design here. And so now it's been added to the screen. As you can see, it actually takes a while for it to load that information on. So if I zoom in here, I now have AP Strange News. Overall, this seems like an interesting design, but the slowness of the interface and just some of the design features just don't make it easy to use. So this has been Ray Dwan with a quick look at Zumobi.